Any recommendations of malted barley bourbons? So if you like high malt bourbons, cowboy, I would recommend trying Chattanooga or Detling. Detling out of Alabama, Chattanooga out of Chattanooga, obviously. Uh, Bear Ogle, favorite toasted barrel. I do like an Elijah Craig toasted barrel, um, but short barrel toast is just a different thing. Like that is just apricot bombs. And I don't know if you get us, we did a short barrel pick recently. We've got two more short barrel toasteds coming for the Bruzel Club. I'm going to be toasted soon? Probably not. Maybe. Possibly. It could happen. I don't. We're going to try not to, though. We're going to try. I'm standing for this stream. I don't know if y'all noticed that as well. I'm trying to, you know, get, get my figure. I'm, I'm in shape. Luckily, round is a shape. But I'm trying to be less round. So I figured if I'm going to be, you know, standing up for or being here for a couple of hours, I might as well stand up for a couple of hours. If I get to where I can't stand, then we'll bring the chair over. Uh, did try the short barrels, a good one for sure. Kyler, what's your thoughts on Gentleman Jack by Jack Daniels? It's pretty good. I tend to go more for the higher proof Jack Daniel releases though. Uh, have you tried Rebel Cask Strength? Pretty good stuff if you have it. Yes, the Rebel Master Distillers Collection is actually really nice. We're doing a video about a bunch of weeders here soon and that's on the list. Yeah, MGP. So. Uh, Midwest Grain Products is a large contract distiller. They're now known as Ross and Squibb, I believe. Um, but a lot of your favorite bourbon brands have bought barrels from MGP. Uh, I, you walk into any liquor store anywhere that has a good selection, and it seems like at least 30% of the brands are using MGP whiskey. If you look on the back of the label and it says it's distilled in Indiana, there's a really strong chance that they bought those barrels from MGP, which doesn't mean anything. It's fine. It's the way whiskey works. But most of these places are maybe buying it, doing their own aging, or they're buying it and blending and, and doing different things. Like Penelope, all MGP. P MGP eventually bought them, but that's how they started their whole brand with just MGP whiskey. Yellowstone's MGP. There you go. So... I'm a, I like MGP too. I do like MGP. A lot of folks give me a hard time because I go into these liquor stores bourbon hunting and I say, oh, it's MGP, just leave it. And I don't do that because MGP is not good. I do that because I'm trying to find something new. I'm trying to find something that's distilled by a small producer because that's who I want to shine a light on. Now, if somebody's doing some crazy blending or some really cool stuff with MGP, I'll eventually find them. Somebody will tell me about them. But if I'm just walking into a liquor store, I want something different. I don't want another MGP expression. Who makes Buffalo Trace? Buffalo Trace makes Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace is owned by Sazerac, who also own a lot of brands. And um, the Buffalo Trace Distillery actually distills Buffalo Trace and Blanton's and E.H. Taylor and Weller and Van Winkle stuff and all sorts of things. MTO, yeah, we have some Still Austin. We actually just did a pick with Still Austin. That'll be available for uh, Bruzel Club here probably January, maybe February. Uh, Pilot, have you tried Yellowstone Limited Edition 2023 101 Proof? I have not. I think I have a 2020 Yellowstone Limited Edition, and it was really good. I had a chance to buy that one, but I was on a bourbon hunt. When, that's a video that's coming out here soon. And it was sitting on a barrel top there. It was a hundred and something dollars, but I'd already blown the budget. So it ended up not getting bought. I do regret not buying it though. There are a lot of good whiskeys under $30. We need a Bruzel OWAS 107 barrel. Yes, of course we do. Um, if they would let me, I would buy 10 of them. But we've got to find a retailer that will give us theirs. Or one of y'all have to win the pick by being in their Sazerac barrel pick program. And then say, hey, we could have the pick. And then we'll go on it and help y'all with it. And then we can send it to the retailer. I don't have any milk here, Sideshow. But we are going to do a video review of milk. Just, just because for some reason or another, it seems funny to everybody. Uh, the only Hirsch I have is a high rye from quite some time ago. So not real sure about Hirsch. Uh, the Pursuit Spirit stuff I've had is really good. Uh, the worst whiskey I've ever had, I, I don't want to do that to They're a small distillery. I don't want to do that to them. Don't want to do it to them. President Select Old Forester. I don't have, I've tried some. Fantastic. Uh, long story, very long story. Best thing I've ever mixed with uh, Pepsi. So don't hate me. But it was, it was a joke. We were having some fun with the folks that had the bottle and um, 
that was Zach from Bourbon Kingdom, and I did mix it with Cherry Pepsi. It was a very expensive bottle to be mixing with Cherry Pepsi. I thought he would be upset. He was not. He thought it was hilarious. Favorite bourbon of 2023. Like, what's the best thing I had in 2023? Favorite bourbon of 2023. What would that be? What would be the favorite bourbon that I've tried this year that was just out of this world? I, the single barrel, the single barrel um, holidays, Ben Holidays. If you haven't had a single barrel Rickhouse Proof Holidays, it is hard to beat those, in my opinion. Much better than the Rickhouse Proof or the um, the normal release, and I love both of those. So I'm trying to think, like, if it was great, I probably would have left up. Uh, the Mictors 10 Rye this year was out of this freaking world. Love that one. Uh, Jack 12 was really good. That's a good call. That's a good call. Uh, the Jack Twice Barrel Rye was actually really good as well. Short Barrel Sweet Potato. Man, I wish they'd have sold that one to me. Best MGP bourbon, Bear Ogle says. I mean, you got to put Penelope up there, right? I like the Prideful Goat. I think that Prideful Goat six-year I have is MGP. That was actually really good. Uh, Redline does a great job finishing. I think their stuff's MGP. Now, they're, like, their bourbon is good, but their finishing is out of this world. So it would probably be one of those out of folks that just come to mind um, for, for MGP whiskey. So we had uh, access to um, a Bowman cask strength, like distillery only release at the Alabama drop. That would have to be right there. That would have to be, if I had it to compare, that would have to be, yeah, because that's out of this world. What's the best gift for someone who loves bourbon? Bourbon is the best gift for somebody who loves bourbon. You could get them some Bruzel Glen Cairns if you would like. Um, but you know, if they don't have good tasting glasses, seriously, Glen Cairns are pretty good, whether they got my logo on them or not. Outside of that, just a nice bottle of whiskey, pretty easy stuff. Uh, Mixer's 10 Rye, buy it 275. If I didn't have a bottle, I would pay like that bottle I've got over there is worth $275 to me for sure. The rarest bottle I own, most of my stuff's not super rare. I've got a Pappy, like the red top Santa Pappy mistake from like 2019 that's open and I'm drinking. I mean, I, we didn't save it because we don't collect whiskey here. Um, and then some, you know, some BTAC stuff and things like that. But we focus mostly on small distillery stuff, uh, barrel picks, things like that. So we're not, I'm not trying to get a bunch of rare whiskey. Sometimes they just fall in my lap with all the hunting we do and, and the connections we have, but that's, that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, what's the white label holiday? The white label, that's what I'm saying. That, this one right here is the bottle and bond. This one is the barrel pick single barrel holiday. That's their distillery only single barrel. So that'll be, that was like one of the barrels we considered when we were there and we didn't pick it. We picked a different one that's better than theirs, but they liked that one so much. They bottled it and sent me, sent me one. I uh, love Knob Creek 18. I love the 12. Nine's good. 12's good. The 18 might be the best one out of all of them. That's actually smelling pretty good. I'm going to be honest. That's, I don't know if it's the beaker concentrating and all, but it's our, our little mixture here. For those that are just joining us, we are uh, trying, we've got 30 whiskeys on the table here. We're going to try at least half of them. Uh, we've gone through quite a few of them so far. Uh, and then we're just creating a little infinity beaker here that we're going to try to see if this is better than all of the ones we've tried so far tonight. Why is Peerless so expensive? I have no idea, Benjamin. No clue. Like, it's good whiskey, but their pricing, every time I go somewhere, and I don't know if it's them or if it's the states or the stores or what, but their pricing is always the most erratic when I go into a liquor store. I'll see their stuff from like, it seemed like $60, $70 up to $150 for the same freaking bottles. So what do you look for in a good bourbon? So typically, that's a good question, Evan, um, and I'm, that evolves for me. But I'm looking for like, I'm looking for a sweetness. I'm looking for complexity. Like I want the palate to evolve, like from the first time it hits your tongue through it kind of like laying flat on your tongue through you swallowing and it leaving something, um, you know, the finish. And I want it to have that complexity. I don't want it to be too oaky. 
I don't want any like harsh flavors that take away from that quintessential bourbon, which is why I'm cautious on finished whiskey and I don't like like French oak and stuff that just add a harshness that's not pleasant to me. Uh, aside from marketing, is there anything special about Penelope? They do a great job with their finished stuff uh, and they do tend to get the highest priority. Like they're, I, I'm assuming they were like MGP's biggest customer or one of MGP's biggest customer. So they get a lot of good barrels from them. Now they're owned by MGP. So I would assume a lot of premium barrels go their way. So if you want the best of what MGP has to offer, I would expect on average that to be Penelope. Um, I don't know when I'll be back to Ohio. It's gonna happen though. Like we're talking to some Ohio distilleries about coming up and, and filming some stuff and doing barrel picks, I'm sure. Best barbecue in Auburn? Um, what's left? Um, like the, what was it? It was, um, was it Price's Barbecue House? What is that? I'm, like, it, I don't go to Auburn a lot anymore. The one right there on Opelika Road, they just sold though. Um, they sold not long ago, so I don't know if that's any good. Mike and Ed's used to be solid, but I think they're gone. So, like, I don't even know what's left in Auburn these days. Um, I stay out of Auburn. It's, it's too crazy. It's turned into a city over there. Nobody wants that. Uh, Chicago's on the list, Kenneth. We're, we were trying to do something really special. We thought we could do a video with some Chicago Bears players. That may or may not happen now, but we just, it got close to football season. That all got tabled. I'm hoping we can pull that off during the off season, which means we'll go up there, but I really would like for it to warm up because it's freaking cold. Uh, I like bourbon a lot. What was your top bourbon of 23? We were talking about that a minute ago. Um, we did have an A. Smith Bowman cash strength. I don't own that bottle, so I can't consider it. Consider that. That was delicious. Um, the Pipe Dream Redwood Empire's first time I've had it. That was delicious. Um, I had some Willet Per... Oh, the Ben Holiday Soft Red Wheat Barrel Pick was good. But all of those are like barrel picks or hard to finds or whatever. Michter's 10, bourbon and rye, both have got to be up there as, as probably some of the best I, bottles I've owned this year, for sure. Uh, Too Tall Paul with the super chat there. Other than the junior, anything compared to GTS? I mean, that's probably the most similar flavor profile. Um, I would also, in that, like, in that range of like a stag junior, you want to try a Blanton straight from the barrel. They're not as like sweet, um, like the GTS, some of the stag juniors are almost like cash strength Eagle Rares to me. Like I get some of those kind of nice grape notes and stuff on some of those batches. The Blanton straight from the barrels I have are not quite that, but they can, they can kind of be similar. So.